All right, our attempt to rally post-inflation is falling short as the Nasdaq's red. Big tech, actually the problem. And a few of the stocks from last night are contributing to that. Dell and Marvell both down. Tom's looking at the options. And Darren Tuttle joins us from Tuttle Ventures, Chief Investment Officer, looking at the numbers. So a bit of a wake-up call for some of these uh, secondary AI trades. Darren, what do you think's going on? Well, you know, we definitely have a lot that's going on right now. We're seeing this transition from software to hardware, right? But we're still trying to figure out exactly where Dell's place is in this AI game, right? We saw revenues beat, we saw earnings per share beat. But then when you look a little bit under the hood, you start to see this margin and operating margin pressure that's coming on. Sure, they're selling these servers. Sure, they increased their backlog to you know over three billion dollars, um, but the, there's still competitive environment out there and alternatives to Dell uh, to service this AI story. Right? You have HP, you have Lenovo, and so the the story here is really one of margin and price pressure. When you've had this stock run up 120 percent. You know, we're coming back, we're tapering expectations a little bit. Maybe we got a little bit over our skis and extreme on one end of the, the side of the curve here. But if you feel like you've missed out on some of this AI play, especially when we're looking at hardware, you know, Dell is still a viable option for you. Um, you know, one of the things that comes to mind is when you make this transition from CPUs to GPUs, you're going to be consuming more energy. You're going to be emitting more heat. You're going to be occupying more space. You know, Dell already has this infrastructure in place to be able to service that, um, but they just haven't seen the margins that they wanted to see. Uh, on the latest call, there was an awkward moment where the analysts kind of realized that the AI server sales uh, didn't materially participate in a margin expansion. And I think that was the big miss. That was kind of the moment where everybody was looking around and saying like, hey, you know, these servers are being sold, but we haven't seen the realized potential or margin expansion that AI may be able to participate in in the future. OK, uh, the uh, valuation of the stock at uh, 18 times forward, I mean, it's not bad uh, at all compared to a lot of stuff out there. So uh, I guess that kind of also justifies maybe giving it another shot at this point, just based on, you know, the other options you've got. Uh, where you're, if you have any valuation concern, then there's a lot of other companies that look a lot worse than Dell. Well, here's the thing, Oliver, is it's it's not the the multiple per se. I think it's the speed of the multiple, right? So we went from a forward price yeah. earnings from 14 to 19, right, in the span of one or two quarters. Typically, you know, that's realized over one or two years. So I think the market is still trying to to gauge the full, you know, traditional service uh, ser servers versus AI servers. They're still trying to price this out. Nobody has that perfect crystal ball of what that's going to look like. And I think when it happens in such a short amount of time, you're going to have this level of price volatility. You can't have a run up of 120 percent without the expectation that there may be a pullback at some point. And, you know, right here, this is where we're seeing it. The thing, too, is that uh, the company is still in a transition, basically, from losing money to uh, or rather from not losing money, but from growth declining to uh, growth increasing. So this is kind of that pivot quarter. But, uh, you know, for all the talk about how it's such a great revolution to give an outlook for the next quarter of 4% revenue growth and just post six, I mean, this ain't no NVIDIA. It seems like it's not even, you know, <laughs> it's not even close, it's not even in the same, it's not even in the same ballpark. It's not in the same ballpark, you're right, um, but there has been a turnaround for the company. Uh, ISG is where you're seeing the most growth, consumer, uh, you know, as, as tapered expectations. Uh, you know, I think the street wanted to see a beat and exceed expectations, right? But, but it, like I, I keep going back to these these margins, right? I mean, you're, you're not going to have, you know, anybody to write home about when you have single digit margins. And that's just the story of hardware, right? Like. Uh, understanding this transition from software to hardware, you're going to be dealing with different margins. There's capex expenditures that have to be realized over years and not just quarters. You know, that's what we're seeing with Dell and the market doesn't like it. Okay.
Uh, Tom, when you look at the options here, uh, what makes sense? I mean, when you've got such a big run and then a chunky sell-off like this, how does it shift the options momentum? Well, it shifts a lot because the fact that going into this report, stock was up 122% this year. I mean, overbought in so many uh, metrics. But the numbers were good. If you think it's going to rebound, how do you take advantage of that? Well, I gave myself a little bit of duration on this example trade. If you think this thing is going to rebound, uh, I went out to the July monthly cycle uh, in Dell here and just looked at a way to, to play the upside, but then offset some of my costs going into the position uh, and reducing risk. So I looked at a call butterfly that's unbalanced uh, to the upside where I'm going to buy one of the July monthly, the 140 strike calls, sell two of the 150 strike calls, and then buy one of the 155 strike calls on this one. So you're in essence, you're buying a $10 wide bullish call vertical, offsetting some of the costs by selling that 50, 150, 155 call vertical against it. You got two short options at the 150. That's the apex of profitability. You're paying roughly a debit of about $2.70 for that. Takes your break even to 142.70 over the next 49 days. So you're giving yourself nearly two months in that. Uh, that's only about 3.5% above the current share price in there. So you don't need a massive move to the upside where it goes back to those all-time highs. You just think it's going to grind higher over the next 49 days uh, on this position, but still staying risk defined on this one, but uh, bullish. Okay, all right, so uh, some opportunities that maybe look different compared yeah. to coming into this, like significantly different, but the sell-off kind of keeps the vol bid in there, so. A little bit, yeah. Got some you know, ability to play around a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Marvell also down, uh, Darren, give me a quick take here uh, on the kind of chip maker ranking, because it seems like Marvell just moved it down a notch. Yeah, I mean, I think Marvell is just in line, right? Revenue met, uh, earnings per share met. Uh, this is always going to be a cyclical industry. It's definitely not down as much as, uh, you know, that sell-off that we saw in Dell. Uh, I think they have a lot of strength in their automotive and enterprise networking segments. Um, you know, Matt Murphy, the CEO, talked a lot about data centers and how this is a $75 billion AI opportunity for them. Uh, you know, having these GPUs interconnected, right, is is the main play here. And so, you know, having every uh, capex expenditure, having to use the Marvell technology, Marvell is is integrated with Nvidia, you know, but everybody across the board. And and so we really think that they have a diversified portfolio. Uh, they have great margins, um, you know, even though uh, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, this higher bandwidth and, and faster data is going to be asking for a lot more from these hardware providers than what they've done in the past. Okay, good stuff. Uh, good uh, grasp of the situation. Appreciate that, Darren. Tom, give me a trade here on Marvell. I don't know, you know, all I see on the chart is basically a failed attempt at the old high. Yeah, uh, remember this stock fell 11%. The previous quarter, now a little bit weaker, it wasn't a horrible quarter uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but if you're thinking there might be some upside, uh, I've got a call diagonal here, uh, giving myself once again a little bit more duration going into uh, the July monthly cycle. So going out to that July 19th expiry, uh, where I'm going to buy uh, something that was at the money, but now the stock's just below 70 bucks. But I looked at buying the 72 and a half strike call there. Uh, and then selling the near-term June monthlies that expire in three weeks, uh, the 80 strike call. So basically, uh, you're buying a $7.5 wide call diagonal to the upside. Now, I've got a debit of about 360 on this. That's where it was trading earlier. It's trading closer to 3 bucks now, so you can get a lot cheaper. That's going to be your risk on the position. But what this type of strategy does allows you for upside but then also that ability to roll or adjust that short 80 call as you get closer to expiration, uh, those rolls can increase in value the closer you get towards that 80 strike. It's a bullish trade, but each week you can roll that short option on a week-to-week -week base basis, collecting credits, increasing potential profitability, lowering risk on that. Now, I've got the 72 and a half strike call you're buying in July, selling the 80 call in June. Now, with the stock moving lower, maybe do the 70 call in July and sell the 77 and a half strike call. Same setup. Uh, you'll pay a little bit more for it, but your break even is lower on this one. Break even on this one, about 73 bucks uh, on that one. That's only about two and a half, three percent above the current share price in there. So if you expect to grind higher over the next 49 days, this might uh, this type of strategy might take advantage of that.
All right, so two ways to buy dips. Yeah. There you go. All right, thanks, Tom. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, um, the Dell dip buying seems like more of a kind of knee-jerk, like the instinct trade. Yeah. I feel like the Marvell one is a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, not a reach, but, yeah. you know, it's like we already put in the high and it fell short. So, okay, thanks, Tom.